and welcome to the next episode of Better Cocktails at Home. I'm Brian Johnson, and we're here in the Quarterdeck Club, and this is the next episode in our series, kind of around the secrets of the Quarterdeck Club, where we go in depth on some of the various things that we do here and how we built our home bar. So um, this episode, I wanted to talk a little bit about lighting and um, audio and sounds. Um, two very important things to any home bar um, is really something you need to think about in the planning stages, right? Of how you want to be able to control your lighting, control your sounds, that kind of stuff. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what we did here and then I'll hopefully maybe give you some ideas as you're planning your own home bars or just in general give you ideas for different projects. Um, so in the quarter deck club here, um, we have 21 lights that provide some sort of lighting, whether it's um, task lighting, whether it's you know general lighting for the room, um, or maybe more just decorative lighting. Um, but yeah, we've got 21 kind of lights. And I put that in quote because some things are kind of multiple lights, but really they act as one and they function as one. Um, so every light in our quarter deck club here is actually, I have it hooked into the Philips Hue system. Um, so it's kind of that you might've seen it, but it's basically allows you to um, control many different aspects of lights through your phone and through the app and have triggers and that kind of stuff. And it's, um, it's a very consumer system. It's, it's super easy to set up and use, which is why I like it. It's uh, more expensive than I would wish it was because I wish everything was cheaper. Um, but that's what we're using here. And it's, it's, I've been in that system for a little while now and it's, it works out well for us without kind of going into the next level of professional lighting, um, which is controlled using something called DMX. And it's kind of that next level. And it's like what you, you see on all kinds of, um, theme parks or just, it's really allows you really granular control or like concerts, granular control over, um, lighting. Um, so I'm using a pretty consumer system here, but I found it works really well. Um, with my kind of abilities and time that I can put into it. So um, I've, I've enjoyed it and I like using it. Um, so they hopefully keep improving over time. But so let me go over some of the kind of lights that we have here, right? So I use quotes because sometimes we have more than one light. Um, so for instance, on our back bar here, um, we've got three levels here, but this all these all act as one light and they're all tied in to one as one light. Um, so they actually, I have them connected and they run over into the wall here and down, and I've got a controller down below here. Um, so those I had to like pre build out before I built all my shelves out. Those are all, it's all integrated. So that's why you don't see anything. Um, and it's all integrated in the wall. And I had to kind of plan that in advance. And it took me a while to really just make sure I got the sizing and everything correct. Um, but I think it makes a really nice effect and kind of, I toyed with the idea of mounting um, the strips in the bottom of the shelves. And I think that could have get put, a, put a good choice also. Um, I ended up doing this, just letting gravity do its work of holding it down. So I'm happy with it, but it doesn't have as much, um, I think I would have gotten more effect from it if it had been down, you would have seen more of the bottles versus the bottles kind of block a lot of the light coming up, but I think it still works really well. So I'm happy with how that turned out. Um, I have one light that's actually lighting the bubbles, right? So bubbles actually really reflective, which is really a cool feature. Um, so you can kind of see as I adjust the color, all the lights together, um, but you can see the bubbles are super reflective. Like they really kind of amplify whatever color you're doing. Um, so you can do red's a nice effect on the bubbles I found. Blue is really nice. Um, white is kind of like really makes them like show up well. It just kind of makes them pop. Um, so that I got a whole light back there just for the bubbles. And that really is important. Um, and then I've got, um, two can lights here. Um, throughout the main part of the bar, I've got another eight can lights. And then I have uh, one, two, three, four, six uh, sconces kind of around the room. Um, and then I have one special light in the middle of the room uh, that's actually called a deck prism. 
and I put it in the base of our projector. And what a deck prism is, is they were used on old sailing ships uh, before the advent of electricity. Um, so basically what would happen is that heavy ships, they might be carrying gunpowder, stuff that's flammable that you don't want fire around. So if you don't have electricity, how you can get light is you can have a fire. Um, or I thought it was pretty ingenious is that they would actually cut holes in the decks of the ship and they'd mount these glass prisms in it. So the sunlight would hit those and then refract and scatter below decks. And they actually like put out a lot of light. Um, so it's a pretty cool little effect that we do that I kind of, it's, that's one of those that's like, doesn't really add anything. It just adds some detail and interest to the room and try to kind of make you feel like you're below decks a little bit on the ship. Um, and so I'm super happy that it turned out and kind of talking about details and things we're really thinking through. So I have a little LED puck light that sits on top of it. So you can't see that actually generates the light that filters down through the deck prism out into our room. Um, so I bought a LED that specifically had the color temperature of sunlight. So it would more authentically um, replicate sun coming through. Um, so I actually found a guy who was kind of an expert on deck prism and kind of did all kinds of research, tried to collect them. Um, at first I was kind of this idea like, oh, I want to do get an authentic one because that's really cool. And I think it'd be an awesome piece. Um, but then I, for talking to him a little bit, I kind of, he informed me that my best option was to get a replica uh, because pretty much the only way you're going to get a deck prism now, an authentic one is from a shipwreck. Um, so barring that, I went with a replica um, and it's from a ship that's on the East Coast. It's kind of now a museum, um, but it's a really cool effect. They had all different kinds of styles um, back in the day, like round ones. They had these tri triangular pyra pyramid shaped ones. Um, so it was really cool. So that's a kind of like a little favorite light of mine. Just adds a little detail to the room. And I can actually, one of the cool things about the Philips Hue system is you can create scenes. Um, and so I can actually kind of have a scene that's called deck prism that turns on all of the can lights, matches them to the same color as the deck prism itself. So it kind of simulates having a series of deck prisms throughout down here. Um, and it just kind of adds another aspect to it. Um, of course you can program whatever you want in terms of lighting scenes. There's like purples, reds, everything. I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff. So you can really kind of, um, really kind of shape the colors you want, which is really important. Um, the thing I can't do with it yet, and I think there's other ways you can do it. Um, the Philips main app, the official app doesn't let you do like animated scenes, like letting colors change over time. Um, I've heard that it's coming, but to me that is like an essential feature that I cannot wait to have because I can really employ that well. And then in addition to kind of being able to control the app, I also have it tied into Alexa. So if I say, Alexa, turn the quarter deck club blue, depending on how smart she wants to be, she'll usually do what I say. Um, so it's kind of really a flexible lighting system I really like a lot. Um, and so it's been really kind of fun to play with and develop stuff. So in terms of lighting, um, it's also important to think about how to keep light out of the room, not just generating light inside of it. Um, so we've got a couple windows and we have curtains that we can really control that light. So you can, um, you know, let a natural light when you want to, but then also completely close it off. So you get to control all aspects of it, which is really important to being able to simulate whatever you're going for in your room. Um, so that's kind of our lighting and there's one other fun thing. So there's some other really cool apps that tie into lighting. One of my favorite things is, um, I have an app that I can actually turn all the sconces and it kind of will vary colors and intensity and sort of simulate um, kind of flame. So our sconces really look like um, kind of they're like candles or they're lit, they're oil lamps. Um, so it's a really cool effect in here that if you just have the sconces on, it looks really cool. Um, I like that a lot. So that's a really cool, that's another app I use. There's other apps you can get that will like simulate thunder and lightning. And so you can really do a lot with it. Um, you know, speaking of things like sunlight, light, you have to have the audio component to it, right? So some of these things require some audio stuff to work. Um, and for us, like I've got speakers throughout. So we have a theater down here. We obviously have speakers. 
Um, so I can tie in any kind of audio playlist, right? So like part of it is generating playlists that you like and kind of controlling that sort of thing. Um, if you can add ambient sound, it really helps too. So um, with the bubbles here, we actually can hear the bubbles. And so when you're sitting here, you'll hear a little bit of just air and bubbles and it really adds to the enjoyment of the space versus just having a completely quiet space. So. If you can find ways to integrate some of those little just ambient sounds, I think that goes a long way to whatever kind of concept you're building, right? Whether you're doing a tiki bar, whether you're doing a modern bar, whether you're doing a pub style, something classic, you know, like a fern bar if you want to go that way. Um, I think there's a lot of ways you can incorporate audio and music and everything else. Obviously with YouTube, I have to, I can't just play you a bunch of music because then that would cause licensing problems. Um, but for regular folks that don't have a YouTube channel, you get to play whatever you want in your home bar, which is super cool. You don't have to worry about licensing. Um, so it's a really like a flexible thing, but I think audio and video, or, sorry, audio and lighting are super key to just be able to control your space. And also it helps you to, um, you can kind of like when you have guests over, you can also use it to kind of guide guests, right? So if it's in the night, people want to, it's kind of like time to go, be done. You can kind of raise the level of lights and people will start getting some cues. Um, you can just really change a lot of things um, and use it to your advantage in running a home bar. Um, so that's a little bit about kind of our lighting system here, um, a little bit about our audio. Both are super critical. Um, but I thank you so much for watching Better Cocktails at Home. We're going to have another episode next week that dives into the porthole and all about how I built it. And it's going to go super detailed and everything you want to know about building a porthole you're going to find out next week. Uh, so thanks so much for watching Better Cocktails at Home and we're going to see you next time.